and welcome to the show. I'm Jackie Simmons, your host for the Suicide Prevention Show, where we are making suicide, especially teen suicide, a thing of the past. I am so excited that you are here, so grateful, because we are going on a journey. We're going on a journey with Carrie Conley. We're going to be talking about vision as victory, inspiring your life, beginning with creating a vision. We're going to get into the how to's, the why to's, and the what to's with Carrie. So without further ado, Carrie, please unmute yourself and join me in the studio. There you are. How are you? Good, Jackie. How are you? I am delighted to see you. It's delightful to see you too. <laughs> so let's see. Hmm. You've had a busy day. <laughs> You're about my fourth show or podcast of the day. <laughs> we're we're, we're going to call you a world-class speaker and a marathon runner. Something. Yeah. So Carrie, thank you so much for making time to be on the Suicide Prevention Show. I really appreciate it. No, oh, I'm honored, as you know, very, very honored, and especially talking about this subject. So thank you for having me. All right, let's go ahead and deep dive into the two pieces of our conversation. The one is on creating a compelling vision, and the other is on what compelled you. Mm -hmm. Why is this important to you? Um, well, I guess you'll, I'll start with that is that I have been teaching this in one way or another, officially and unofficially for almost 27 years. Um, I've been an entrepreneur since my kids were babies, which was a long time ago. And it was at that point in my life where I wanted to really create my own life to, to make it the way I wanted it to look, not what everybody else wanted me to make it look like. Because, <clears throat> you know, this was the 80s, Jackie, when we all came out of college and we were told, Here's what you do. You get a degree, you go to work, you get a good job, you work your way up the ranks kind of thing. And everybody else in our tribe, including my husband, was doing that really well. And I was not. I wanted to just create what I wanted it to look like. So I became an entrepreneur, became very, very passionate around why you need to have a crystal clear written vision, because I wrote my first one at that point. And because I had gotten so clear on it then the rest unfolded for my life. All the things that I had put on my vision started happening. And now fast forward in the past eight years, several things have happened. One is that I launched my own speaking and coaching business to, to be teaching this to other people. And two, uh, so I had a husband that I met in high school. We'd been married for, we had been married for about 30 years and had two children, my son Cole and my daughter Laurel. And in July of 2014, I lost my husband to suicide. So that was six years ago. And then three years after that, I lost my 25 year old son to suicide as well. And it was at that moment when I knew that the reason I have been called to talk about vision and purpose, and this is my vision and purpose for my life, is because you know God knew what was coming. And he knew what was going to start happening. And now I'm on a major bandwagon to be really talking to people around why they need to have a, a clear written vision um, for their life, especially, again, young adults um, and teenagers, which is what I know you're focusing on. So that's why I'm so passionate about it. Wow. <laughs> um, yeah, that's a significant motivator. To yes, make it is. Yes, it really, really is. So your path to making a difference came out of your own experience, both with the power of having a vision for yourself. Yes. And the, the reality that you having a vision wasn't enough to save anybody else. Mm. Well, I know that they both um, also had lost their vision through a lot of different reasons. And um, as much as I am and have helped so many people with being a vision expert, that there are just some things in life that is just not a part of your plan. And obviously this was not a part of my plan. And I am 
it's just kind of ironic, isn't it? That I talk to people so much about having a vision so that they have hope in their life. Um, and then this would happen to me, but, but it's a big, powerful piece of my story and why I think a lot of people will listen to me because they know what I've been through and how, how much I am so passionate about this and how much I do believe that when people do have vision, it gives them hope. And right now, more than ever, so many people have such little vision um, on their future, especially this year, I think has been really challenging that they lose hope. And that is a slippery slope into a lot of epidemics. Well, you know, the only thing we know for sure is that it's unpredictable. The constructs yeah. of life are no longer something we feel we can trust. Right. And so that's a huge piece of this. So you develop trust in the vision and it started really young for you. Right. So tell us about your vision that you put into writing when you were in college, coming out of college. Yeah. Um, well, I was about 26 years old and my husband and I had been married for three or four years. And again, went into the corporate world in which my husband did very, very well. Um, I just didn't fit, fit the structure at all. <laughs> um, I'm very self-disciplined, very self-motivated, but I did not like the structure of these are the days you're going to work. These are the hours you're going to work. This is how much vacation you don't get. Um, I just didn't do that well. So at one of the jobs I was working, Jackie, they had like a staff development day and they had a woman come in and speak. And I don't even remember what she talked about, but she was so inspiring. And I remember just falling in love with her and thinking to myself, oh, it'd be so cool to be able to do something like that, right? So I asked her if I could take her to lunch and she was the very first person in my life that said that I was never going to fit that corporate mold, that I needed to sit down and write out on paper what I wanted my life to look like. Nobody had ever told me that. So I took a day off from work and with a legal pad of paper, because again, this was the 80s, yeah. <laughs> um, I wrote out everything that was in my heart and in my head of what I wanted my life to look like, where I wanted to live, what kind of relationship I wanted to have with my husband, how we spent our time, where we traveled to. We didn't have our children yet, but I knew that we would start a family soon. And so I wrote a lot about what kind of mom I wanted to be, what kind of values I wanted to instill in my kids, the relationship that I wanted to have with them as they were growing up. And I noodled some ideas around, okay, if I'm going to be wanting to be an entrepreneur, what would it be? Because again, I'd never been given this allowance to think like this. So I wrote several ideas. Uh, my background, my corporate background was in marketing and sales. So I thought maybe I'd be a consultant, um, which I did for about a minute. And then I wrote <laughs> some things around um, that I really would love to be in a company that there was a lot of women and a lot of leadership and a lot of support. And you had the opportunity to build a six figure and beyond residual income, mm -hmm. um, maybe even earn some trips because we love to travel, maybe in the industry of health and wellness or beauty, skincare. I didn't know, just noodled a lot of ideas. And on the last line of that piece of paper out of my head for the first time ever was that someday I would love to be a, a speaker and a trainer on goal setting and vision building. So what happened out of that, and this is my belief and what I've come to know is because I got so still in that space for so long, God and I were talking and pretty much she was re saying to me, this is what I have in store for you, what your purpose is. And as, a, as we learn to collaborate and work together, these things are going to start unfolding. So fast forward a couple years later, I now had my son. I was still working full time, which meant he was in daycare and I was miserable with that. Mm. And I got introduced to my first entrepreneurial gig, which was being in network marketing in a company called Arbon, which most women are very familiar with. Yeah. And five months pregnant, I was like, I'm in. Signed up on the spot because I knew because mm. of what I wrote on my vision that it, it checked off all the boxes, right? Yep, Stay home with my kids, personal growth, residual income, trips, the whole thing. Um, so I jumped into the company, both feet, and got, out, got my son out of daycare, quit my job when my daughter was born. And that was what I did as I was raising my kiddos. 
And the one thing that I had to do the most, Jackie, when I would bring somebody into my team is I had to sit them down and get them to write their vision on paper. Because I knew that if they didn't have a really powerful, big, beautiful, leap off the page vision for why they wanted to make that business work, they were going to quit within the week. Right? Mm -hmm. So I'd been doing it for many, many years. And as I said, about eight years ago, when my husband and I became empty nesters was when I decided to create some curriculum for people. And I started doing little mini workshops. And then I talked where I brought people through why you need to have a vision and all the things that having a crystal clear vision fixes in your life and in your career. And then I gave him the exercise on how to write it like I did. And so that's what I've been doing now. And organically to this point, I've been attracting a lot of female entrepreneurs that have hired me to take them from vision to how do I make money at this? Mm -hmm. Now, as you know, in our phone chat, I mentioned to you that I've wanted to for almost two years now really start working with young adults um, to help them get their vision clear because they are very, very confused, uncertain, can't see their future. Well, yeah, let's see. Um, their parents are very uncertain, confused, Correct. and can't see their future anymore. Correct. Yes. <laughs> so, yeah. Yeah. I mean, they, they, it's always been tough to be a teen. Yes. But when you, your parents, you're dealing with your parents who have lost their anchors. Yes. They're struggling with anxiety. Yes. Then you've got this, you know, escalating or escalating. Yes. Yeah. 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 It has been a generational thing, unfortunately, that's been passed down. And that, that is one of my biggest missions and why I want to work with young adults, because I want to stop that pattern. Mm -hmm. Um. They don't realize they're doing it intentionally. We don't realize that we've given up on our vision and that's what our kids are going to do too, right? Mm -hmm. um, but I've been saying this in all the summits that I've been doing lately, especially with um, moms. I did a summit on, on Saturday to moms. And what I said to them was, the best thing you can do for your children right now is follow your vision. Mm. Oh, yeah. Follow your own vision, your own dream, and see it out because... Right now, what you're doing, a lot of moms, what they do, of course, is they stop their life and give it all to their kiddos, thinking, I'm just going to serve my kids and I'll get to my dream later, which they hardly ever do. Later on, they start going, well, it's too late anyway, and all that stuff, right? It, it can happen that way. There is no doubt. Yeah. And the reality of that is very perplexing to me. Yes. But I saw it play out where... In the morning, imagine a woman going to work and her young kid, you know, think two, three years old, latches onto her leg, screaming, yeah. you can't leave me, you can't leave me. And the mom goes into, are we going to be able to manage without my income? I can't leave. Are we going to be able to manage without my income? Mm -hmm. and, and even if she makes it to work that day, she's really on a trend now to sabotage herself at work so that she can be home with her kid and it won't be conscious it'll just happen yes correct a man same scenario same kid kid latches onto him in the morning you can't leave me you can't leave me ah! and dad looks down and goes don't be silly darling daddy's go to work yeah and leaves with absolutely no guilt whatsoever because daddy's go to work right and moms don't have that image of themselves. Mm -hmm. So a vision would solve a good hunk of that, Carrie. Yes, no doubt. Um, which is, again, why I teach them how to get their vision written on paper, which I'm, I'm assuming I'm going to do a little bit of here in our interview. Um, I think we could probably manage to have people scrambling to get paper. Yes. <laughs> yeah. You've been giving um, the heads up, people. Go. Yeah. yeah. Heads up, because I, it, in the time allotted, want to do three things. One, I want to talk about what I mean when I say vision. Mm -hmm. Two, I want to talk about a few things that I know, specifically for this audience, Jackie, what I know having that crystal clear vision can help fix. Okay. And three, I will give everybody the exercise they can do that I've given to thousands of people. Got it. Happy. Happy. Um, but I just really wanted to follow through with that thought that we were on a minute ago around why I'm talking so much right now to 
young adults and especially their parents because for example, now my daughter is 26. She's been married for two years, had a baby in May. And the one thing that I want her to do is to follow her own vision so that her son can watch her do that and she can teach it to him. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, we still have a culture and educational system that we are raising young humans up through that instead of talking to them about their authentic purpose and who God brought them to be on this earth and for them to carry that out, we bring them through a system that strips them of that. Mm. And I think right now, more than ever, we need parents in young adults, especially the ones who are about, about to be parents, to understand that it's really up to us. Oh, to, boy. To make sure that we talk to them every single day against the grain of the culture, that they matter, they have an authentic purpose, and to help them flesh it out and follow it. All right. The counterculture. Well, you know I'm all about that. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Many, many people believe that there's no purpose in life, period. Mm -hmm. And that's been around for a long time, and it became enculturated. Mm -hmm. And so shifting that, I mean, I was in that for so long that when my purpose tapped me on my shoulder last August, it was a shock to my whole system. Mm. Uh, and so I just, I encourage people to be a little more open to this than I was. Mm -hmm. All right. So here I am. I am going to be your rebellious student. Tell me about vision. I'm not buying it. Okay, well, here's the thing. So let's talk about vision because a lot of people um, are like me, speakers on vision and purpose and following your calling and finding your authenticity and all of that. Um, and they talk very broad strokes. So they may say to you, you know what? I just want you to like, I just want you to dream and I want you to, Jackie, go sit down with a bunch of magazines and cut out some pretty pictures of what you would someday like to have your life look like, oh, right? Put it on a boarding. We're talking about board. yes. collaging for grownups, supposedly. Yes. Now, I do believe in vision boards. I've always had one um, because what the brain goes to work at creating is what it sees and hears on a regular basis. So, right. But here's where, where most people stop with the vision stuff is they put, they slap the pictures up, up excuse me, and call it a someday plan. They kind of just look at it and go, well, someday I'll get around to that. And someday that might happen. And someday I'm hoping that will happen. But what I do is I get people to put dates on things. Ah. So let's say they've got a picture of, I don't know, a beach house up on there, right? And they're talking about someday this, someday that. This is the dreamer's mentality. You know, it, it, I'm dreaming it. It'll happen. And what I know is it happens when you go to work of setting some target dates on when you're going to be in that beach house, when you're going to pay off that debt, when you're going to leave your job. You need to have a date so that right behind having the vision, you have some targeted goals that you can follow in order mm -hmm. to take baby steps. Right? Mm -hmm. So that's the difference with what I do with vision is I get people to take some action. Cool. And when I tell people the exercise um, before we're done here, they'll start to understand what I mean by target dates and where to start, right? So then we go to work at, okay, so what does it look like in detail? And once we get it down on paper in detail in every area of our life, what we want it to look like with some dates, here's what you'll start noticing will happen when it helps fix. First thing is that it gives you hope because right now what people are looking into, I, I talked about this on Facebook live on Friday. When you talk to a lot of spiritual leaders and a lot of visionaries, they will tell you that the biggest reason for most people's anxieties is because they're looking into the future too much and they're not present in the moment, which is really all we have, right? I'm, I'm very aware. We're, we're really only in this moment, you and I together, and this is where it is. Mm -hmm. Now is the only time that I have, and, and right. if we use that to empower you and take action, that's useful. But I right. can see where taking action in alignment with your vision would be even more useful. Yes. So 
when people are looking at its future, especially right now, what they're doing is they're looking into it with a whole lot of uh, anxiety because what they see is what they think it's going to get worse. Ah. So when I get people to write a big, beautiful vision of what they want their life to really look like, it's a whole different projection into looking into the future rather than what most people do. Right? Absolutely. So we have to change the stories. We have to stop saying, well, it's bad now and it's only going to get worse. Or, you know, I don't even know if I'm going to have a job in three years and I don't even know, you know, how I'm going to uh, start a family. I don't, I'm not even dating, you know, they look into the future with all the negative stuff. Mm -hmm. When you have the vision that I'm talking about, you get a whole different projection on, wow, I'm kind of excited about seeing what my future is that I'm going to create. Right. And no matter what's going on right now, circumstantially, whether it's their personal life, that's kind of in disarray or something's not good or whatever, or what we've got going on this year is outside of our control. It gives us that ray of hope. Mm, there you go. Yes. So that's the first thing is that I've helped a lot of people who are in distress mm -hmm. um, that will transparently come to me and say, you know, I am, I struggle with depression a lot. Uh, I struggle with anxiety a lot. Uh, mm -hmm. And I really get them to take some baby steps on, on just telling me just a few things right now that if you could wave your magic wand and ask for anything you wanted, what would it be? Hmm. So, so we write the vision for hope and to get people to look into the future in a whole different way than they're looking now. The other thing that it does, and this is another epidemic we have going on in our country right now, is it helps you set better boundaries around your time, your money, and the people you spend it with. Oh, I could, yeah. I could spend a weekend on this. <laughs> um, boundaries is a big problem. And I hate to say it in generalize it this way, but women have a really hard time with this. Right? <laughs> <laughs> hey, okay. Yeah. Um, I can't imagine why you would think that. But yeah. yeah. We are people pleasers by nature, most of us. So we want to, we want to, we feel like we've got to say yes to everything. Mm -hmm. um, and nurturing. And nurturing, yeah. giving, and over serving everybody else other than ourselves. And so we have zero boundaries. And so what that leads to is a whole lot of burnout. Mm. a lot of bitterness and just quite frankly, just not being able to take care of yourself. I mean, your health is another problem, right? When you don't have those boundaries. So when we have a clear vision, again, that's in writing with dates of where we're going every day, when you are faced with all the decisions we're now faced with, it's easier to say yes or to say no, because it either lines up with the vision of where you're going with your life or it doesn't. Oh, a decision-making framework is worth its weight in gold. Yes. Right? It's so, yeah, I'm sorry, Jackie, go ahead. No, that's okay. I'm just agreeing with you. I'm just, yeah. Yeah. So imagine, you all, when you have this vision and you're so clear about it, where you're going, being able every day and every hour to be intentional with the hour that you have. Because again, the present moment is all we have. So it, instead of trying to do all things for all people. We're only doing with the most intentional thing with the best use of our time for ourselves, for our families, for um, companies that we work for or our businesses that we run. It's a whole different way of life. Mm -hmm. You find a lot of freedom. <laughs> yeah, it's really amazing because on the surface, it looks like I'm just adding more to my plate. I'm just adding more to my plate. Right. And then other things start to fall off. Yeah. But it really, the, the piece that's really compelling for me is this sense of commitment to the vision. Yes. That, and that's where I think a lot of women are challenged. Yes. Oh, that's just what I want. But if my spouse wants something else, my kids want something else, my parents mm -hmm. want something else for that same block of time, just what I want, that word just in that sentence. Yes. It's devastating to a that, plan. Yes, but it's backwards thinking, right? We think 
If we are, if we we're thinking, if we're not taking care of everybody else, then we're not serving at our highest level. And it's totally backwards thinking. We have to take care of ourselves so that everybody else wins. You okay. can't take care of your families if you can't take care of yourself. Funny right? thing. Uh, yeah. Yeah. So it absolutely helps put better boundaries around time. It helps put better boundaries around money. And there's a lot of different ways I mean this is that, um, as I mentioned earlier, I end up uh, to this point coaching a lot of female entrepreneurs. And one of the things that when they have their vision written and they've got a game plan, let's say for the year, it's so much easier for them to decide where their money should go and what to invest in and what not to invest in. Um, yeah. Just it, it, you can avoid a lot of money going out the door when you've got a clear vision on what you're doing. Mm -hmm. Right. Oh, yes, absolutely. And the last boundary is around putting boundaries around people in your life. And this truly I could do a whole weekend retreat on. But um, this is an exercise in showing people how you can have a lot of people in your life, but not everybody gets to be in the front row. And what I mean by that is that if you, if I were to get you to visualize that you were standing on a theater and looking out into the seats and let's say there's five seats in every row, the only people who should be in the front row are the nines and tens. And what I mean by nines and tens are the people who lift you up, believe in your greatness, believe in your vision, encourage you when you're down. And maybe they're actually even people who are a little bit further ahead in the career that you're going after that want to help you get there. Now, those are the only people that you should be spending the most amount of your time with. Right? That's going to change a lot of family dynamics. Too. Yes, it does. And it's hard with family because sometimes it's not family members who are in the nines and tens. Sometimes family members can be the ones and twos that suck the life right out of you. And I totally get it. Mm. Now, so what I mean is you can still have them in your life but the difference with the nines and tens is that you allow those people to talk into you, meaning you, you take to heart what they say to you. You take their advice if they give it. Um, emotionally, you let them in. Got it. The ones and twos, you allow to talk to you out of respect. You have a conversation, but you don't let anything they are saying get into you. Got it. Right? Make the so, well, it's everything. And quite frankly, Jackie, at all the events that I've taught when I've done this, this exercise of the theater thing and moving people around in the seats, it is the one thing after all my events, people come back and tell me, wow, that front row thing was a game changer for me. <laughs> I believe I that. Moved some people around and I opened up seats for some new amazing people to show up that are going to help me go to the next level. Power of association is huge. Right. So, so definitely with the vision, for example, me knowing where I want to go inside my business, the people who are in the front row right now are very hand selected five people that, that are believe in me, see my greatness, helping me get there. And I trust that they've got my back and that they're, uh, they're going to lift me up. Everybody else I wave at from the, from, from their seats. <laughs> There we go. I yeah. love that analogy. Yeah. yeah. So vision helps a lot with boundaries. That's the second thing. Mm -hmm. The third thing vision helps a lot with is it becomes the anchor in all your storms of life. Got so it. what I mean by that is every day we're faced with lots of adversities, lots of trials. Some days it's just the daily stuff of you know, getting our kids out the door, getting, you know, the dog to the groomer, uh, somebody says no to us, or we get a flat tire, you know, these are just daily life stuff. Mm -hmm. Sometimes we get major stuff like what I've been through. And when people do not have a very crystal clear vision and understand what their purpose is, they let all those things push them off track. Mm hmm the biggest key to success in life and I mean, pretty much every area is consistency. Consistency in our relationships, consistency in our health, consistency in taking care of ourselves, consistency in, again, if we're running a business, doing the right activities every single day, not when we feel like it. 
So now that you all know, I've built two businesses over the past 27 years. If you if you're an entrepreneur, if you've tried to venture into that or whatever, you know what it looks like. It's a roller coaster of a lot of stuff. It is. And without a rock solid vision of where you want it to go, you're going to let that stuff push you off track. Mm. I heard a leader speak many, many years ago. Um, she's one of the most brilliant women I've ever known. And she was talking about the characteristics of leadership. And a lot of them we know already, you know, you're, you have a vision, you're a good time manager, you're a good delegator, um, you have the right team. But she said something I'd never heard before, and I've repeated it many, many times. And she said it to a group of women. So <laughs> she said that one of the biggest characteristics you have to develop as a leader is learning how to manage emotion. Uh, I believe emotional resilience is the key skill that will keep people moving into leadership roles and that without it, this is not going to be a pretty year. Yes. So, so many people, Jack, you have to know, ask me, how in the world did you keep going through all that? Like, how in the world did you keep going? My, the, the woman who in, um, enrolled me into Arbonne was my best friend from high school, who one year into me doing um, Arbonne died suddenly, um, kept going. Teams of people came and went, um, all sorts of adversity, raising my kids. Um, and then obviously the things that I've been through the past six years. And the biggest question most people ask me is, how do you keep going? And my answer is always because my vision of what I want and what I'm doing is bigger than what I have to face every day. That is the magic. You have to want something so bad that no matter what obstacle you're facing, you will bust through it and keep going. Mm -hmm. And that's why most people drift is they don't have that anchor. Yeah, well, I won't argue with that. And the two things, the visioning and the emotional management. Right. The, the, the biggest crime of the century is that they started talking about this, but they titled it emotional intelligence. Mm -hmm. And they didn't title it emotional management. And most people had no interest in emotional intelligence because that sounds like hard work. Yes. <laughs> yes, yeah. it does. Yeah. And yeah. I tried to do it from the stress management point of view. And you know what I found out as a stress management consultant? Nobody wants to manage something they don't want. Right. It was really bad marketing on my part. <laughs> well, we all learn, don't we? Yeah. Mm -hmm. yes. um, yeah. So if you, anybody listening right now, or you just know this is you, this is, you've been inconsistent, you drift really easily. You run your life based on how you are feeling that day. I hope this will help you tremendously with this because this life we live in is, it's ever changing and that's never going to stop. That's a guarantee. Mm -hmm. That's one thing that won't change is we'll never have a world without change. So we have to learn how to manage it. And um, it's again, kind of what, similar to what you were saying er earlier, Jackie, about how women will emotionally get tied into something and um, just take too much on and get too much emotionally involved in, in the decision, right? And a man will just go, hey, this is black and white. I got to do what I got to do. And uh -huh. that's just how it goes. Yeah, I think the vision is the difference. I think that a man sees himself as the breadwinner of the family. So that's the natural course of his day. Yes. And when the woman sees herself as the nurturer, the emotional pain will derail it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, it, it's been an interesting couple of discussions for me because many, many times, one of the biggest challenges is that we don't want people to be mad at us. We don't, we want to be liked. Yeah. And when we're trying to manage our businesses from those two perspectives that I don't want to piss anybody off and I want my kids to like me, mm -hmm. you, know, you got this double whammy happening yeah. here. Yeah. Yeah. But with that mentality and following that through, everybody loses. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Because again, the mom is not ultimately happy. Yeah. Oh, and absolutely not. She can't do it right. 
Yeah. And the kids ultimately see that mm-hmm. and know that. And so that's the role model they start following when they become adults. Yeah. Yeah. The biggest reason I kept going when, when I was raising my kids uh, at home on the days that I wanted to quit so bad, and there were so many days I wanted to quit my business, I can't even tell you. One of the biggest reasons I didn't, number one, is because my vision overrode everything. But number two, I knew my kids were watching me. And I knew that if I quit, I was basically allowing them to do the same thing when they became adults and they were, were going to hit some pretty tough stuff. Mm-hmm. Right. It gives them permission because they watch what we do, not what we say. That's exactly right. And that's the thing that I've been saying to all these, these women lately is you have to realize that what you do is way more impactful than what you say to them. Yeah. And right now they need you, us to be the hero because we really are it. I mean, the heroes from what they used to be able to look to are not in this world anymore. So we're it, right? Yeah. We are so, the replacement for parents to reclaim being the role model for their children. And there's also this real challenge. Some of us just didn't really get the memo that mm-hmm. that was what we were supposed to be doing. Well, yes, again, broken, broken generation, raising broken generation, right? Cause, you know, it's been kind of a cycle. Um, so that's another reason for the vision. Um, Another reason that it's super important that you have a vision is because you can't lead other people if you don't have one. Really? That's the job of the leader is to be the visionary. Yes. And we all are leaders, whether you want to believe it or not, in some form or facet, even if it's just within your own household, but you cannot be a good leader with a wishy-washy vision. Who follows that? Right? (laughs) I never wanted to follow somebody into either of my businesses of somebody saying, hey, I'm kind of trying this thing out. I'm seeing how it goes and kind of hoping, you know, it works out. I mean, who wants to follow that, right? So instead, we have to have such a crystal clear vision that we can articulate it so clearly to other people that they can see it Mm -hmm. and want to attach to it. That is exactly beautifully put. I think that maybe you've said that a couple of times. Yes, we've got to be able to communicate. <laughs> so when I was raising my kiddos and I was doing Arbonne, I just com- I would always communicate to the family. I would say, guys, here's the vision of what I'm doing this month and why. Here's what I need to do in order to make that happen. But here's how as a family we're going to win, right? So it was me being able to articulate to them what needs to be done as a team and what, what, what was going to be the reward out of it. So we've got to have a clear vision that we can articulate. You know, when I decided to quit my job and I wanted to stay home and get into the industry of network marketing, to be honest with you, my husband was not thrilled. (laughs) (laughs) Um, Uh And how I brought him in to the plan was I had a very clear vision that I sat down with him and I said, here's what I'm going to do. Here's why I'm doing it. Here's the time I'm going to need to take each week to do what I need to do. And here's what it's going to do for the family overall. Mm-hmm. I've started teaching this to um, a lot of men and women who are parents because I want them to take their vision and share it with the family. That's really interesting. Um, there, there was a whole genre that came out about how to invoke, if you will, the law of attraction that said, don't share your things with anyone. And of course that was to prevent them from having to deal with what I call the crabs. Yes. And the reality is that the opposite is true, but it's some discernment. And the way that you phrased it, where they, you, it's about how we as a family will win. Yeah. I think probably one of the critical pieces that a lot of people don't know to include. Yeah, it's, it's interesting that you bring that up, Jackie, because that's the second time I've heard that in two days of somebody asking me, well, I was told that you didn't want to share it with other people. Mm-hmm. Um, and I understand why, because again, you want to run to the one person that you hope will embrace your vision so much 
And that one person could be a spouse or somebody you really care about that because they can't see your vision, it scares them and they think you're about to do something harmful to yourself. And so they, they, they throw up all the red flags. And in all love. In all love, they're just trying to protect you from something they can't understand. And so when I tell people to share their vision, I also tell them, be, be careful who you share it with. <laughs> yeah. And know that whatever response they give you, it's coming from their own vision, not yours. And so there has to be some mutual respect and some, you know what, just got to trust me. We got to just know that we're doing this for, for the benefit of all. Right. There's a, there's a method to the madness. Yeah. Who you share it with, how you share it, you know, and being able to give people the preamble. Yeah. I'm going to share something important with you and I want your support around it. Yeah. Give somebody the preamble would be really, really useful. Yeah. And I really like the way that you buttoned up the end with, and this is how we're all going to win. This is how we win. You know, every year in Arbonne, they would give us a trip incentive and I earned every one of them when I was in the company because of, we were all about the travel, right? Yeah. So every start date of the trip incentive was the day I would sit down with the family and go, okay, here's where we get to go. Here's when we get to go. Here's what I have to do over the next six months to make that happen so we all go. And your part in this are these things. If I'm in my office on my phone, no interruptions. If I have to leave the house two or three nights a week to go do my Arbonne skincare parties, because that's what I did <laughs> in the 90s, um, no pushback. Um, I don't need to come home to a house that's a mess, uh, dishes everywhere, stuff not done, because I wasn't there. Okay, this is teamwork. We, we've got to be on the plan together. But it also helped with their vision. Mm -hmm. Right? So... So the last thing I want to tell you that vision will help fix, and then I'm going to give you the exercise that I've given a lot of people, is something that I've learned a lot about, and I touched on this at the very beginning when I talked about how I sat down in a quiet space when I was 26 years old for the first time and just let my heart pour out. Unknowingly, what I was doing that day was putting myself into the right energy to receive what my purpose was and to be able to carry it out. Um, there's a lot of really big name spiritual leaders that I've started following that talk a lot about energy and where you put it. Mm -hmm. And I've become so aware, especially after losing my husband and my son, how important it is that I put my head in the right space first thing every morning, because what you think about, you bring about law of attraction. And so many of us wake up and the first thoughts that we have are not good. And so there goes the day <laughs> mm -hmm. because you are now putting yourself in a vibrational level of believing stories that other people are telling you, believing what the media is telling us, believing this, believing that, believing what your friends are saying, instead of putting yourself in what is true for me and how do I put myself into that vibrational energy to receive it? Because what I have now come to know that everything you want is already there. It's already there. It's mind blowing when you really start to understand this and believe it. And if you would have asked me two years ago, I'd be talking about this stuff. I would have told you uh, what, but. <laughs> <laughs> um, gee, I can't imagine why this would be a challenge because it's a very different language. It totally is. But. It has served me in my healing process mm. because, because becoming aware of this has helped me get up um, and get myself back in the game, right? Mm -hmm. Instead of get up and go, okay, here we are. I am a suicide survivor twice over. We don't have my husband and son here. Um, it's this, that, and the other thing. And you can go down that slippery slope so fast. Mm -hmm. And instead, what I've learned to do through a lot of practice, a lot of studying, a lot of being around people that talk about this, that how I capture my energy first thing in the day is how the day is going to go and how I'm able to keep serving. So 
It's why I said earlier why I now know when I sat that day not knowing it, that what I did was that. I got myself in the right energy to receive what my calling was. It's powerful. So here's the exercise. All it's right, kind of fun. bring it on. So I want you to get out a piece of paper and sometime, I hope you guys will do this sometime over the week and let me know. There we go, paper. Okay, we put, whatever date this is, you need to put yourself in a very super quiet space. I mean, seriously, no distractions. Um, it's even better if you can take yourself away for a day or two and do this. Get out of your environment as much as possible, but literally no people around you, no phones going off, no email, no nothing. And what you do is date at the top of the piece of paper three years as if it, th three years out from that day. Mm -hmm. So if you were to do that today, obviously it'd be, I don't even know what today is. October, October. October 5th. Yeah. Yes. October 5th, 2023. So date it. And then right after the date, write how old you will be on that day. Mm -hmm. And after that, start writing the ages of the people in your family. Kids, grandkids, nieces, nephews, parents, grandparents, mm -hmm. anybody who's super involved. How old will they be three years out? The reason I do those two things, number one, is because time is non-negotiable. We can't stop it. And two, we can't stop aging either. <laughs> the two non-negotiables of life. Mm -hmm. Now, when I get people to do that, already they're starting to see some things when they can project themselves out, right? So they're seeing, so for, I'll use myself as an example. So three years from now, I'll be 61. Mm -hmm. And my daughter, who I now mentioned you, has uh, started her family, most likely will have another child by then. And I am seeing a lifestyle that I want to create around my personal age the things that I want to accomplish, and most especially how I want to be there for my daughter and her family. So we start, here's, and here's the other thing, what happens when people see ages is they start going, wow, some shifts are coming. Oh yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm going, okay, let's see. My oldest grandchild will be 20. <laughs> oh my God. When did that happen? I Yes. See what we're talking about, right? We're seeing, wow, okay, so stuff is happening and there's gonna be some lifestyle shifts because of the ages, right? So we, we have to project out to know, okay, if that's organically coming with aging, what is it that I want it to look like at that point? Mm -hmm. And so now we go to work at writing a letter to somebody that we have not talked to in the past three years. So for example, Jackie, if I were to ask you, if, if we left each other from here and I didn't see you until October 5th, 2023, mm -hmm. you decided on that day to sit down and write a letter and go, Carrie, I have to catch you up on everything that's happened since, since that show, right? Got it. So you go to work at telling me, what does your family life look like? I'm going to give you five F's of categories you can write in. What does your family look like? And everything that comes with it. Like I said earlier, I talked about what kind of relationship I had with my husband. Where were we living? What did we do together? If we entertained, who did we entertain? When we traveled, where did we travel? The more detail you give the brain, the faster it can, it can connect to everything you want. Mm -hmm. Don't leave anything out. So family life. Second area might be in your, your uh, faith life mm -hmm. or community, volunteering, whatever you want to call it. Third category would be maybe in the area of health and fitness, fitness and health. Mm -hmm. Whether it's you just want to be strong enough to be able to pick up your grandchildren or you want to run six half marathons a year, doesn't matter. It's your thick, right? Fourth category, of course, is in finance and career. What's paying for this big, beautiful, fabulous dream life you want? <laughs> Funny how people leave that out. Isn't it? Totally the someday mentality, right? So if I, Jackie, want a beach house three years from now to, to be, be the grandmom that has the beach house for all the grandkids to go and hang out with, right? I need to know right now, okay, where is the beach house? How big is it? Um, how often do we go there? What do we, what would do we do? And most especially, I need to know how much money am I going to need 
to have that. Mm -hmm. So it's no longer a someday plan. Now it's a projected date of we're going to be in that beach house. His, this is how much it's going to cost. Now I can project all the way down into my business plan of what I need to do every day to make that happen. Makes it very right. tangible. Totally. And the last category is the fifth F is foundational things. And this is where you kind of describe a lot about the person that you have become. The things that you've really worked on in your personal growth, the things you want to be remembered by. Ah. Right. Yeah. I wrote more when I was 26 in my vision letter about the kind of person I wanted to be versus the things I wanted to have. It was interesting when I keep looking and I still have it. I go back to it a lot. So you write this big, beautiful letter and this becomes your compass, your North star, your rock, your anchor, your everything so that you now can take that and break it down into one year goals, six month goals, 90 day goals, monthly goals, all the way down into knowing today, what are the most important things that line up with the vision so that you can intentionally, you can be intentional with every hour of the day because it's precious. It's all we have. Makes sense, doesn't it? It makes total sense. Yes. Makes total so sense. that's what I'm helping people do, Jackie, especially, like I said, you know, I really want to, as you and I know, suicide and depression are, are on the rise and I am not a medical doctor, so I can't deal with the physical part of the reasons for that. And I'm not a psychologist and I can't deal with the mental part. The only thing I know that I'm called to do is talk about how to talk to the, the spirit part, helping them find their purpose and connect to it. I love that. I love your clarity around this, Carrie. You know, Thanks. we are in exactly the same boat because I came into this mission when it tapped me on my shoulder last August. Right. With this, who the heck am I? I mean, the only qualification I had was that I'm the mother of a teen suicide attempt survivor. Yep. That's it. Yep. I mean, it was like, holy crap, what is this about? Ooh, and the reality is that I looked around in the area of pure prevention. Right. And there wasn't anybody. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, well, I can do better. I might not do it right. I might not know what I'm doing, but I can do better than nothing. Yeah. And there was nothing. Every single suicide prevention program I could find was actually an intervention program for people who had a known risk factor. That's right. And I'm like, guys, waiting until someone has a known risk factor is risky. Right. A lot of times the first sign is an attempt. Or we don't even know what they're That's thinking. What I'm saying. There, there are no signs up until. There are. Yes. Yes. Yeah. So we are definitely on the same bandwagon, Jackie, because I want to prevent even the first seed of this to take root. I'm not interested in teaching people how to talk themselves off a ledge, Carrie. Yeah. I am interested in helping them create a life that they don't even know there's an edge. Correct. Correct. That is exactly right. And this is why. I'm starting with young adults because I've got to start somewhere, but, you know, working into teens and literally at some point, you know, working this into where we're teaching it to four-year-olds, three-year-olds, three-year-olds, you know, talking to them from them because at that moment when they're that young, they are still so in their authentic personality at that age. Mm -hmm. And if we just learn how to foster that and let them be that and embrace that and congratulate that and, you know, celebrate that instead of saying, you know, it's really cute that you want to be a singer, but that's, you can't make a career out of that. So oh my God, you know, yeah. we, we do it out of love. I know. You know I know. Out of love. And if a parent has a vision that they commit to. Yes then they will see the power of a child committing even to something that they think is totally outrageous. The power is in the commitment. Yes. 
And it's not easy because again, we're going counterculture, like you said earlier, we're up against what they're still hearing everywhere else in their schools, uh, other organizations they might be a part of. So it's, it's, it's gonna be challenging. And my daughter and her husband, of course, are making a commitment to this in their lives and are really starting to see, okay, we're going to have to really take control of this because, um, and unfortunately right now, you know, I know that so many mamas are struggling because of COVID and trying to figure out, you know, how they've been homeschooling, re doing all the things. Um, and I feel sorry for them. I really, really do. It's challenging, but I, at the same time, I'm, I'm kind of happy that our school system got a little imploded. It needed to be. So well, I get that. Yeah. Yeah. So, so it's a grassroots, grassroots movement we're on right now, friends. We are on a, if it's to be, it's up to me kind of thing. Mm -hmm. And just like me and Jackie and all of you, I hope that you will, whatever it is that's tapping at your heart that you know you're supposed to go do, that you will follow that tug. There's no accident that tug is there. So I'm going to just remind people to go to the chat box because that is where your gift is. Katie took care of that. Thank you, Katie. And if someone is watching the recording or listening to this, know that the link is in the show notes. So if you don't, if you're not on live, don't worry. The link is in the show notes for you. And Carrie, it is such a generous offer to give everyone your class on how to actually do this whole visioning process because as clear as your directions were i mean i got it you know <laughs> i mean there's definitely already you know, people are popping in and signing up i mean it is just such yeah. an amazing right. gift carrie thank you so very much well i'm honored and i just want to also share that people who actually go and do the master class and they complete it um, I invite them to email me and so that they can have a, a little complimentary call that they can share their vision with me a little bit. Oh, yeah. So I love, love, love hearing people's visions. <laughs> I can tell. I yes. absolutely get it. Yeah. Oh, all right, Carrie. Final thought. Cause I know I'm pushing your time. You, you have had a day. No. Final thought is just like I said earlier, just know that you matter and you have a purpose and there is no accident. The things that you are dreaming about every day are there. Um, don't believe the lies that they aren't true for you. They are true for you that it's meant and don't wait. Do not wait that you think you have to have it all perfect, all figured out, have the right time, <laughs> the right money. That, just don't. <laughs> Just do something every day in the direction of your vision. There we go. Do yeah. something every day in the direction of your vision. Thank you, Carrie, for helping me do something today in the direction of my vision. I'm honored, Jackie. Thank you. And you're most welcome. And thank you very, very much, Carrie. Thank you. Hang on, everybody. The ride gets more interesting from here. <laughs>